Okay, let's move on to chapter 16. I already mentioned buffers a little bit, but we'll say more about them and this other stuff. Okay. Uh, let's start with the common ion effect. Let's say I had... Uh, let's say HCN. Let's say I had uh, 1.0 molar of this. And then let's say I had uh, KCN. And let's say I had 0 0.8 mole molar of that. Okay, so you'd say if I had this one first, then let's say I add this second to my solution. So I add this one first, and second I add that. This is a common ion effect. Let me show you why. So we go, we write out our general equation for an acid for the HCN. And basically, first I have this. And that'll cause HCN to have a certain pH. But if second, I add this. Adding something to the products will cause a shift to the left. That will cause the H3O plus concentration to go down, and thus the pH will go up. Or in other words, adding a common ion, Cn minus, common to both compounds, will cause the pH to go up. That's one way to think of it. The second is, if you just know that KCN is a base, how would I know that KCN is a base? Because, yeah, if you remember when we did acid base or neutral? K plus comes from KOH, so I know K plus is neutral. CN is from HCN, that's a normal acid, so CN minus is just a regular base. Okay? So I know that that's basic. So another way to think about it, when I add KCN, I'm adding something basic, so the pH better go up. Yeah? Why does the KCN dissociate? Why does the KCN dissociate completely? That's because uh, this K right there comes from a conjugate strong base. So it's neutral, becomes a spectator ion. And any ionic compound is going to dissociate completely. So this is going to be true for any ionic, which will happen whenever you have a spectator that's a conjugate of a strong. Yeah, so at any time you can take that K off and not bring it back. All right, so this will be, if you needed the pH of this, there's two ways you could find it. One is say, oh, I have a common ion problem. Let me write the ice table. Let's say we want the pH. Let me write the ice table, ignore water. Got a zero there, so I'm going to shift to the right towards the zero, plus sign where the zero is. And oh, this is beautiful. I know exactly what I'm doing. You'll be so happy that I gave this question to you on a test. You'll get this. You'll assume x is tiny. And you'll solve it from there. But what you won't realize is that the friend sitting next to you is happier because they realize this is, what's this? Another name for this combo. It's a buffer. I've got an acid and it's conjugate. So your friend, who's even happier, is just going to use the henderson hasselbach equation because they realize they have a buffer. You can use this equation anytime you realize you have a buffer. So you take the negative log of the Ka. Where am I going to find the Ka on the test? Yeah, on the stupid back page. Okay, And it's right uh, HCN right here. And in fact, if you look even one column over, I give you the pKa. So you even have to calculate it. It's 9.21. Forget that. It's 9.21. Okay. Plus the log of the base. What number goes in the numerator? 0 0.8. The base over the acid. Done. Whatever that is, that's your answer. Okay. It'll, it'll be a pH somewhere around 9. 9 9.2. That's right. So it does shift to the left when we have the common ion. So that's the conceptual background behind it. However, when we're solving the problem, we approach it completely differently to set up the ice table. 
The set of the ice can only have a zero where the H3O plus is. So we're always force shifting it to the right because we're entering assuming nothing has happened yet. Whereas the way we ask you the question about the common ion, we're assuming something has happened and then we have the common ion. But the ice table we're entering into it as nothing has reacted yet at all. Yeah. So it's uh, mathematically we're approaching the problem differently than the way we're thinking about it. Yes? How did I know it was a buffer? Because I have an acid and it's conjugate. The conjugate is the one that's lost one hydrogen. So it's HCN and CN. So this uh, think of like, I don't know, Sesame Street or whatever. You're like, oh, I see a CN on both sides. And I'm going to think, does one have an H? Does one have more H's than another one? Or specifically, one more H than another one? In this case, yes. So anytime you see something like uh, KF and HF, yep, but prepare. Or uh, let's see another uh, HOCl and NaOCl. Yep, but prepare. So you're looking for what's the same, and does one have more H's than the other? That's it. So is that okay? I, you can fill anything in here. Let's go really crazy. HO, I'm just getting this from the table from the exam. Not prepare. One has one more H than the other one. You see how all these are buffered? You're just looking. Does the second thing look pretty much the same except with one less or one more hydrogen? That's, that's it. Good. Good, you asked. That can be a little confusing. So the Henderson Hasselbach is used any time you have a buffer. Question? Yeah. Okay, so there's some caveats to that. That's right. So the concentration of the buffer pair, one has to be within a factor of 10 of the other. So if the first one was one molar, then the second one could be up to 10, but really much bigger and you're destroying the buffer. And so you'll, you'll see a big variance. So if it was one and then point 0.1, that's really your limits there, about a factor of 10. Yes? You can't really use the Henderson Hasselbach. Or you know you could, but you know it's starting to break down. At some point around there, it's not going to work anymore. And you probably want to use the ice table. But that would be a more rare sort of problem. You'll see we usually set it up just so that within a factor of 10 so you do the problem. Yeah? Um, for, when we assume x is small, do we have to prove that on the test? Or can we just, just, like, just say anything? Uh, do you have to prove that x was small only if I ask you in, on the exam? Okay. Yeah. And I look back at my old exam, sometimes I don't ask you. So then it's up to you. But sometimes you'll get a chapter 14 problem, x is not going to be small. So if some, for some reason you assume that, you're going to be messed up. So you should always double check in your mind, at least, or on Scratch or something. Okay. So just pay attention if I ask you, and then there's two ways to, in the reader that I showed you, that you can verify it. Okay. Uh, oh, stoichiometry table. So common ion is just a kind of buffer problem, really. Okay, stoichiometry. If I had that buffer pair, H, oh, uh, HCN and KCN, and this was one molar, and this was 0 0.8 molar, and let's say I had one liter of it, and then I, then I add something. You want me to add an acid or a base right now? A base, okay. So it'll be a strong base. Let's say I add KOH, okay, and I'll pick some number like 0 0.2 moles of it or something like that. Then you've got to set up a buffer. Uh, you're going to do stoichiometry because you're adding something to the buffer. This base will react with the first thing or the second thing in the buffer? First or second? The first because? It's an acid, and that will react with the base. So you write that down. HCN plus the base. I like to just drop the K because it's a spectator ion. We'll go to CN minus plus H2O. Notice I wrote only one, a one-directional arrow. Why is that? 
I have a strong base and that will force it 100% to the right. And uh, one molar, one liter, that's going to be one mole of this, uh, mole. I'll have 0 0.8 moles of this and there's 0 0.2 moles of this and ignore water. This is a stoichiometry problem. I need a zero on the unfavored side. So I'm going to subtract off the smallest number from the reactants and add that number to the products. This will be 1, this will be 0 0.8, 0. And then I'll go straight to henderson hasselbach pH equals pKa, I found out in the previous part, that's 9.21, plus the log of the base. What's going to go in the numerator? What number? 1.0, the base, over the acid, 0 0.8. Whatever that is, is the new pH. It should be somewhere around 9.2 because it's a buffer, so it's going to resist the change. Yeah. Well, why do I subtract off the smallest? Because I know the reaction is going forward 100%. And so the, the limiting reactant, which is the smallest one, is going to be depleted first. Unless it's depleted, the reaction will not go forward anymore. Okay, so you're looking for what's really the, the limiting reactant from 2A. And it's a lot simpler because it's just a smaller number. But in 2A, you have to do all this math to figure out what it is. Sometimes that happens, but we're kind of setting it up so it doesn't happen for you all. Question? Yeah. Hi. So Hi. When you do the log, base over acid, right? Um, why don't we put the molarities or the OH? Why are these not molarities? Is that the no, question? No, no, sorry, no. sorry. Why don't we put in like 0.2 instead of for OH? Yeah. For OH. Why is this not in here? Because there's none left. Oh, Zero. You can see the yeah, I'm going from here, this to here. There's none of it, so I don't need it. There better not be any. There's nowhere to put it. There's nowhere to put a strong base in this equation. Better not be one there. Okay. Does it matter if it's a buffer or not? Uh, no, you can find stoichiometry problems that are not like this, for sure. But the most common that you have found so far that has for geometry is when you have a buffer and you add something to it. Next chapter, we're going to find plenty of examples where it has nothing to do with buffers, but you'll have to do story geometry first. Okay. Yes? I would not do the ice table. I would just use Anderson Hasselbach. Okay. Do you want to do the ice table just for fun? Is that what you're saying? Then you can ask me afterwards. Okay. That's fine. But you don't need it because the henderson hasselbach is the short form of the ice table for buffers. As long as you know it's a buffer, use that equation. So the problem is actually done right now. Yeah. Okay, cool. Let's continue. Uh, I kind of busted out this, this stuff. Okay.